Hello, today uh, we're going to talk about structure 3.1.1 and 3.1.2, all about um, the periodic table. Um, so we're going to start our discussion on periodicity. Um, so we're looking at periods, groups, and blocks, and then um, the principal energy level and valence electrons. All right, so let's see what kind of information we can get from the periodic table. Um, so here's our generic periodic table structure. Like this and rows are called periods and the periods correspond to the um, outermost energy level for the atom so the first period has just one energy level the elements have just one energy level so the outermost is the first level and so we call the principal energy level n typically so when n equals one that means the outermost shell for that atom is in one for the first period. And then of course, then we have two, three, four, five, six, and seven going down. So there's seven periods um, and that refers to the outermost energy level for the atom in that row. Um, you should also be able to locate blocks on the periodic table. So the first two columns, first two groups, and helium are considered part of the S block um, because the highest energy electrons are in an S orbital. The rest of the representative elements are considered in the P block because their highest energy le electrons are in the P sublevel. Um, the center here, D, D block, highest energy electrons are in the D sublevel, and then F block down below. So S, P, D, and F. Um, just make sure you can figure out those blocks from the periodic table. You should also be able to locate the uh, metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. Um, typically, we use like a staircase here-ish. Um, and it's not 100% perfect because remember that bonding is kind of like a continuum. Um, so the metallic character versus non-metallic character kind of in between, right? Um, but typically, you'd say that the elements around the staircase are more metalloids. Um, things to the left are more metals, and things to the right are non-metals, uh, for the most part. Um, let's see, you should also be able to recognize certain um, groups and group names. Uh, the group one are the alkali metals. Group two are the alkali earth metals. And then um, on the other end, we have group 17. Those are the halogens. And group 18 are the noble gases. Um, the majority of the D block are considered transition metals. And then the F block consists of the lanthanide and actinide series. Um, those are a little bit less important because you, you see them involved less in common chemistry that um, you would encounter at this level. Okay, so let's do a quick re review of uh, valence electrons and how that relates to the periodic table. So again, there's our generic periodic table structure. Um, we can use a shortcut to figure out valence electrons for the um, representative elements. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with the exception of helium, which only has two. Um, but essentially everything in group one, the um, alkali metals have one valence electron. Group two, alkali earth metals have two valence electrons. Group 13 um, has three valence electrons. Group 14 has four, 15 has five, 16 has six, 17 has seven, those are the halogens, and 18 has eight, with the exception of helium. Helium only has two electrons total, um, and because it just has that s orbital, uh, the one s orbital, it becomes completely full when it has two electrons. Um, so that's why it's still considered a noble gas, because its first energy level is completely full, um, but it doesn't have a p sub level, so it's just two valence electrons. The rest of the noble gases have eight valence electrons and have that completely full um, energy level. Now, um, you should be able to write 
um, for each group the um, kind of general valence electron configuration. Um, so like for group one, they just have one valence electron. So you'd say it's NS1, where N is the outermost energy level. Group two would be NS2. Um, and again, N is the outermost energy level, principal energy level there. Uh, group 13, then, we're going to get into, I'll start like this, um, we'll have 1s2, so s is full, but now we're going to get into the p sublevel, and I'm going to use n here instead of that. So ns2, n, p, 1, so that's three total valence electrons, two in the s and one in the p. 14 would be ns2, n, p, 2. 15 would be ns2, np3. 16 would be ns2, np4. 17 would be ns2, np5. And 18, with the exception of helium, is ns2, np6. And of course, that P sub level is full now with six electrons. Um, so that's what makes the noble gases so stable. Um, so make sure that you're able to figure out the number of valence electrons for all of those representative elements and be able to write the outermost electron configuration um, following this pattern. So we talked about S and P just now, but I want to give you a very brief review of electron configurations all of the way up. Um, you need to know all the way up to Z equals 36. So that is your um, atomic number or the number of protons. So you need to go with the first 36 elements, you have to be able to write their electron configurations. Um, and we always start with 1s2. And I'm going to go ahead and relate this to our periodic table because that's the easiest and best tool that you always have access to. Um, and then the F block. But since you're starting with the first, we start from hydrogen. So, and that's in the first period. So that's N equals one. And we're starting, we always start on the left, the S block, the one S, S can hold two. Um, after that 1s, our next row is 2, and again we're starting in the s block, so 2s2. Going across now, we're in the p block, so 2p, p can hold 6 electrons total, so 2p6. After that, the next row down is the third energy level, and again we're starting in the s block, s can hold 2, going across 3p now, so 3p6. So now we're up to 18, 18 electrons total. Um, we need to make it all the way up to 36. After um, 18, then we're going to go the next row down and we're in the fourth energy level. So we'd have 4s2. But after 4s, we start the D block and the D block starts at three. So then we're going to get into 3D. And D can hold up to 10 electrons total. So 3D10 gets us up to zinc, which is 30. Um, and then after uh, 3D, we go back to 4, and we're at 4P. 4P6 gets us up to 36. Um, and so that is if we did all 36 electrons. Of course, you would just stop at the number of electrons for the particular element that you're working with. And um, typically, when we're forming ions, you're going to be removing the electrons from the highest energy sublevel. Um, there's a few exceptions to that. Um, when we, we'll get into that in another section when we talk about transition metals. Um, but for the most part, if you use the periodic table and go from, you know, go from hydrogen and work your way up following the S, P, and D blocks, and just kind of remember that D starts in three, you should be able to get those first 36 elements um, with, with a high level of accuracy. Okay, so classify the following elements as metals, nonmetals, or metalloids. Um, you're, of course, going to use the periodic table. And um, radon is here ish. Right? It is a noble gas, so it is a nonmetal. Rubidium is uh, here ish. And rubidium, therefore, is a metal. And silicon is here ish, and it's um, a metalloid. So again, a red rung that staircase is roughly the um, metalloids. So as long as you're pretty close there, it should be good. Silicon has some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. So here's another type of question you might encounter. Electron configuration for an element located in period two and group 15. Um, so remember, so period two, 
that means its highest uh, electrons are in that second energy level. Um, so we know for sure that it's going to have the 1s full, right? because the first energy level is completely full before we can move on to the second energy level. And then it's in group 15. So if we 13, 14, 15 here ish, right? Um, we're going to go so 2s2, and then the 2s is completely full, and then we're going to go 3 over in the 2p, so 2p3. And so this is nitrogen, um, but that's how you can figure out based on period and group number, um, the electron configuration and the identity. OK, so this example wants us to find the electron configurations of the valence shell in atoms of gallium and lead. So gallium is number 31 on the periodic table. So you should be able to write the whole electron configuration for that one for sure. Um, but it just wants the valence electrons. So the noble gas that um, comes before gallium is argon, and argon has 18 electrons. After argon comes that 4s sublevel, um, and then you would have 3d completely filled, and then um, the 4p would just have one electron in it to get us to 31. Now, you could focus on just the three valence electrons for this. 4s2, 4p1, and that should be able to answer the, que um, the question properly, the three valence electrons in gallium. Um, now let's go to lead. So lead is much further down on the periodic table. It has 82 protons, so 82 electrons in a neutral atom, um, but it's in the same group as carbon, right? And so that's group 14. And group 14 has the generic valence shell um, configuration of NS2 and P2 with four valence electrons. And since lead is in the sixth period, we can figure out very quickly that it's 6S2, 6P2 for the valence electrons of lead. Okay, so in our review here of the periodic table, um, hopefully this should link back to um, some nature of science questions, some structure um, back from structure 1.2. The organization of elements um, in the periodic table facilitated the discovery of new elements, and this is absolutely true. Um, so essentially, when you when they organized the, the elements in order of um, increasing atomic number or atomic mass as it was originally, um, effectively what they found is that there were empty spaces, um, empty spaces in the periodic table where there was um, like a a blank spot between elements of um, you know smaller mass versus a larger mass, smaller protons versus larger number of protons, um, and that um, because elements that are in the same group have similar chemical and physical properties, um, you, they, they noticed that there was a an empty space in terms of properties as well. Uh, and so we're going to get into periodicity, but effectively. Um, like there, there was an empty space here. They knew that there was an element that had similar chemical properties as the elements above and below, and um, somewhere in between the mass of the elements um, from left to right. Uh, so they were able to predict the existence of that unknown element based off of the patterns of reactivity and um, mass from the periodic table.